So we open on an inner city estate, the sort of place where crime is rampant, where society is crumbling, and where people who resemble homeless cleaners spontaneously combust. And then there's the opening credits. Once we get back to the episode, the audio is weird. It seems to be out of sync, but it doesn't seem to be at the same time. Some people talk when they're not on screen and there's no voice, but there are sound effects. Take a look. I honestly can't tell if my DVD is broken, the episode is trying to be arty, or if the episode was made by someone with the same technical ability as the editor of Children of the Living Dead. Oh well, I'm sure it'll make me take the rest of the episode even more seriously. So the body's been taken away and some kids are running around the crime scene, because police? What the fuck do they do? There's also a journalist from a local paper running around, because what with national newspapers having had financial issues for years, a tiny local one with a creative team of two and a dog would obviously be able to pay a guy to concentrate on someone who was smoking who managed to get set on fire. There's been no autopsy yet, so why does the media care? Occam's razor! Use it! Oh hell, who am I kidding? The guy's probably a crazy person the newspaper sent there to get him away from them. Next up, he'll send his meth fueled stories to the International Zone in Tangiers. A boy's having nightmares about this guy, who may or may not be his father, above his bed, and his mum getting a role in the house that dripped blood on Alex. Next up, the kid's playing football and we have an obligatory creepy old man scene. Boy! That old guy can be a priest! Run, boy! Run! So, sensing imminent bad touching the boy's friend, slash sister, slash regular doctors and nurses partner rescues him. She explains that he's a bad man, and more than that, she somehow manages to fix the sound problems. Thanks, little girl! She also explains that the old man is the devil. It's a name for the devil. We're living in the same block as the devil, Jake. Oh, it's always the one you least suspect. So the journalist has the boy's mum over for a talk about the story that he's working on and a quick bit of seduction. Apparently, there's been five deaths. Frankly, if I came across a tower block in a poor, impoverished area with less than five deaths, I'd be more likely to suspect witchcraft. At the same time, we find out that the boy's much stupider than the average bear because he's decided that the girl's right. The old man is the devil. Why? Because he's old and called Nick, and old Nick is a rarely used nickname for the devil. I once had a teacher called Faustina. Perhaps she's the devil! In a way, he decides that they should break into his house to find evidence that he's the devil. Perhaps his horns. Yes, the devil would find some proof there. Maybe his horns. I don't know how finding that someone has horns in their home, somewhere that's not their head and not even their body, would prove that someone's the devil. But there's no time for questions as the boy breaks in. Well, breaks too strong a word. He opens the unlocked door, wanders in and freaks out. At the same time, his mum goes into a lift, which starts to bleed. <laughs> Give it up, Lady Wiseau was made for that part. So she runs out and bumps into the old man. Turns out there was a body on top of the lift. How it managed to wait there until she used it to bleed, I have no idea. Anyway, she has to go down to the police station to get, I was in the fucking lift and suddenly it was like that kick-ass scene at the start of the first Blade movie on the record and the old man is going to babysit the boy. Retired priest, creepy old man, or the devil himself, I don't know which is worst. So the old man shows off the little statues he's made of everyone who lives in the tower block, including ones of him and his mum, even though earlier on someone said they'd only been there for a week. He's a fast worker. He then touches the boy and asks a leading question. What do you think I am, Jake? I don't know about the kid, but I'm leaning towards him being the black private dick who's a sex machine to all the underage boys. So the next day, or perhaps later that day, the old man tells the little girl off for talking to the boy. She then kicks the boy in the nuts for talking to the old man and storms off. Which would indicate to me that perhaps she's not the most balanced person to take who is the devil advice from. So later that night, the girl breaks into the boy's room in an effort to appear not to be mental. Which would seem to be rapidly approaching a forlorn hope at this point. She again argues that he's the devil. You have to believe me, old Nick is powerful. He has the wrong kind of magic on his side. Stay here tonight if you wish. And suddenly it's Scandinavian vampire classic Let the Right One In all over again. If there's a crotch shot and we find out that she's had a penis cut off, I'm going off to get drunk. 
But thankfully, there's no crotch shots, and the next day, there's the boy's birthday party, with his mum, the boy, the crazy, manipulative, and possibly evil little girl, and the reporter. The reporter brought his own present, and one he found in a lift. A present which contains the body of the boy's pet cat, which will no doubt severely impact the reporter's chances of fucking his mum. So the boy runs off, and the reporter talks to the mum. She's a widow. Her abusive husband was killed in self-defense by the boy, and the murders began the same day. It's almost as if something is set in the stage for your arrival. That is a very weird way to put it. That's needlessly filmy language. People don't talk like that. Stop it. So the mum then reveals that she had a miscarriage the night her husband died, a daughter that she was going to call Sadie, the same name as the crazy evil little girl, who is now handing the boy a knife and telling him to murder the old man. Jake! Go away! And somehow the girl can stop the reporter by making him gouge out his own eyes, and the boy kills the old man. For you, I could have saved you. You are a prophet! Oh my god, you killed Brad! Why would you do that? So, yeah, the old man was actually an angel sent to stop the boy from being damned or something. I have to say, that's one identity I did not expect. And the girl walks off and gets picked up by her possibly zombified father. Happy families. Happy families. Which, as far as I can tell, means very little, because she was actually the miscarried daughter who only died because her dad beat up her mum. So her teaming up with her dad to spite her mum and brother makes perfect sense. What the hell's their plan? Damn the boy and bring the family back together? The girl, according to almost no theology, would be damned because she died before she was even born. What's the plan? Why are they doing this? The dad's supposed to be behind all the deaths in the tower block. Why? And how did he know they were going to move there? Oh, fuck. Maybe they were all just born to be douches. Oh, but the girl wasn't even born! Possibly the dad was trying to manipulate the boy into being jailed because he avoided jail for killing him. Okay then, but why kill an angel? Someone there won't be records for. Someone who doesn't exist. You might as well have got him to kill a ghost. And what was the team in the first episode? I now suspect that London is a sentient zombie epidemic. This episode had a good idea, but it was handled in an unsubtle and cat-candid way. The reveal of who the girl was surprised me. Not just because it ultimately makes no sense, but because they'd spelled it out earlier. I expected a curveball, like she was the father himself taking on an ironic form to fuck up his son's life. But they stuck to what they'd spelled out. And it makes no sense because of it. This isn't as bad as episode 1 on any level, but it's also not as good as episode 2 on any level. This is okay-ish, but that's me being generous. People from all walks of life are on their way to review Topia, Internet City of the Future. Our scientists have been working around the clock to bring you the absolute finest in handcrafted reviews, humor, and entertainment to please the eyes and ears of every man, woman, and child. Everything you need will be found right here in Reviewtopia. Operators are standing by to reserve your spot and keep you in touch with our team of reviewers. Blast off into the future of internet reviewing entertainment at Reviewtopia!